Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to HTML Basics for CS197 Week 1. Most of us cannot get through the day without using the internet in one form or another. The World Wide Web is how we use the internet most often, and many of us think that the internet and the web are essentially the same thing, but they aren't. The web is just one part of the internet. If you get your email through a service other than the web, including Outlook, you are using the internet. Video streaming on your TV goes through the internet as well. Connected gaming systems like Xbox, Wii, and PS3 are also using the internet. When you access a website, you will use a browser. Common ones include Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and Opera. Browsers take the markup that we use and write HTML and turn it into the sites that we are used to seeing on the web. Your computer probably came with one of those already installed, but you may have installed another. Different browsers appeal to users because one might have more features or is faster than another. Web designers often have multiple browsers on their computer so that they can check the performance of their site compared to another one. It is recommended that you have at least two for this class. To pull up a website in your browser, you will need a URL. A URL is a uniform resource locator. We also call this a web address. When you receive a URL, it may be basic, such as www.grantham.edu, or you may include a full address such as http colon forward slash forward slash www.grantham.edu. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, which is a set of rules for transferring data across the internet. You might also see the S after the HTTP. The S indicates that this is a secure site, generally using SSL or TLS. It's a safer way to send data back and forth and it's used for sites that use personal information, such as GLife, banking, and credit card sites, as well as shopping. How do we decide what goes on a website and what does it look like? There are several things developers need to consider to create a good website design. Work with your client to determine the purpose of your website so you can design what will, what will be best to serve that purpose. Know your audience. If you're working for AARP, you might want to use a simple website with a larger text and easy navigation. But if you were designing with Team Vogue, you might want to use interactive features, videos, and mobile-friendly design. Start with a good design ensures that your site will require fewer edits as you work. In this class, we will use HTML to create a basic website. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. We will be using this latest version called HTML5. HTML uses tags to tell the browser how to display the pages. For most items on an HTML page, you will need an opening tag or a closing tag or and a closing tag. Notice that the tags contain these symbols with the tag name in between and the closing tag also has a forward slash. While some versions of HTML allow you to leave out some closing tags, for best compatibility, you should always include closing tags. This ensures that your markup will work on the maximum number of browsers. It is also helpful to you when you are looking through the markup to see where one section ends and a new one begins. The easiest way to get into this good habit is to put a closing tag in right after you put in an opening tag and then put your markup in between. The two tags plus the content in the middle are called an element. The exceptions to this are empty elements. These are elements that have no content and therefore only need one tag. The one you will use most is a break. HTML does not recognize the function of the inner key and you will need to put a break anytime you need a line break. In general, HTML tags are not case sensitive. However, developers generally use lowercase for several reasons. XHTML is case sensitive and requires it. And for developers that have learned XHTML, it is easiest to stick with all of the same case. Lowercase is also easier to read and easier to type. Also, if you decide to become more advanced with HTML and use a browser's built-in developer tools, those change the markup to lowercase and you will find it easier to view in the same way in both places. Since you are learning for the first time, you should use lowercase so that you use good habits. However, if you do use upper tags, browsers will read it just fine. Another thing that developers do to make their code easier to read is to indent. This is another practice that is not required, but it is also a good habit to get into from the beginning. The indentions make it easier to see sections of code. To write HTML, you will need a text editor. 
your computer most likely came with a basic one like Notepad or TextEdit. However, there are several free ones that work better for HTML. They give you things like color coding, automatic indents, and syntax highlighting. Your book lists several on pages 24 and 25 and you can pick any one you like. The markup examples used throughout the book are Notepad++. So if you find it helpful for yours to look like the book, Notepad++ would be the best choice. It also has extra plugins you can download as you get more advanced. What you cannot use is a rich text editor like Microsoft Word. Word adds formatting that you cannot see and will not work in HTML, so please avoid using this. Stick with Notepad++. There are also website editors called WYSIWYGs. WYSIWYG stands for what you see is what you get. These are designed to make it easier to create web pages with or without HTML knowledge. You can often drag and drop elements onto a web, web page template and see it just the way you will in a browser. While these are nice for small business owners and charities that cannot afford a good website designer, these do have limitations. You have limited control over what elements you can use and where they can go on the page. Many of them also add a lot of junk code. This code adds to the file size and reduces the speed with which your pages will load. In this class, you should not use a WYSIWYG so that you can learn how to code correctly. Every HTML document has five elements that you should always be included. You will start with the doc type, which looks like this. It is an empty element, so it will have no other tag or content. Next, you will have the HTML tags. Everything else goes inside these. The next set of tags are the head tags. These contain all the information that is not visible on the page. The page title goes here. After the head goes the body. The body contains everything that is visible on the page. The majority of your markup will go inside the body tags. You may occasionally see some of these elements omitted, but this is considered bad form and will cause errors in some of your browsers. The next tag you will need is the P tag. P is for paragraph. Most of your, or actually much of your text can go inside these. You now have all the basics you need to create your first web page. Open your text editor, Notepad++, and give it a try.